How's that? Better? Yeah, perfect. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the City of Syracuse Landmark Preservation Board. Today is Thursday, July 16th. President of today's meeting are. We have uh, Don Radke, Dan Leary, uh, Cynthia Carter, Julia Marshall, Tom Cantwell, Jeff Romano, and there are more people arriving. Hold on. Jeff Romano and Bob Haley uh, on on the line today, and I'm Kate Atwater. Okay, terrific. <clears throat> I'd like a motion to accept the minutes. Somebody want to make a motion to accept the minutes? So many. I think so. Do I have a second? Yes, Julia. Julia. Any changes, modifications? Hearing none, seeing none, all in favor of accepting the minutes as submitted? Aye. 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 Abstain? Nay? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Old business. There is no old business. So we're going right on to new business. Uh, C of A's, C of A 20 13 5, Randall Road house painting. Is that applicant on? No, the applicant isn't. Uh, usually for house painting, if it seems right. pretty straightforward, I... Right. Do you just want to go through that for us then? Yeah, so uh, it is a house on Brattle, five Brattle. And hold on, let me get this going here. If I can get move it down a little. No, nope, I'm moving the wrong pane. Hold on. Let's see if I can get rid of this. Here we go. All right. Um, so, uh, as you see, it is a stucco and shingle style of house, and the and it has a, this uh, stucco covered garage. They are looking to um, paint the second floor shingles and trim this brown, the Iron Mountain brown, um, the stucco on the house as well as on the garage will be this off white. And then the uh, front door will be this green. Okay, we've got some we've got some feedback. Somebody's got to go on mute. Okay. Wow. So, um, are there any comments about the color choice? A very positive. Very good selection. A very good selection for a two tone on this house. This house has needed a two tone from its origin, so it's great to see this approach of the owner. Okay, somebody uh, is causing a lot of feedback here. Okay, so by raise of hand, and uh, Kate, you can see everybody. I, somebody wants to make a motion to approve. Kate, do you see somebody making a motion? Oh, I, I do, actually I can't see. I, at the moment, I can't see people. If people, if someone could just say. Move to accept. Um, folks, we really can't hear. So there's somebody that's not on mute that has to go on mute besides Kate and me. <laughs> Because we really can't hear. It's impossible. Okay, so Kate, do we have a first and a second? We, we have a Dan, uh, Dan I had as a first, and could, could I get a second? Oh, I see Jeff. Right. Okay, Jeff has got the second. Thank okay, you, by raise of hand, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Kate, is, do we have enough? Yes. Is raising it? Yeah. Yep. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on. CA-20-14, 115 Hampshire Road, rear addition. Is that applicant on? Uh, let's see here. Let me get the... Yeah, we should have... Come on. Yeah. Patio enclosures? I'm sorry, could you say your name again? I'm sorry. My name is Ron DeGraw. I'm from Patio Enclosures. We're the contractor. Okay, great. okay. Is the applicant themselves on or just you? The, just myself. Okay. 
Okay. Um, you want to kind of go through what you're going to do here? We're going to be installing a three season room on the uh, rear of the home. It'll be ground level, um, all glass room uh, under installing a structural footing underground to support the room and roof. Single story, single slope room. I believe here's, oops, and I can turn this around so you can see better. Hopefully. Kate, could you uh, put up an elevation of a house, the rear of the house, so we can see exactly where it's going to go? Let's see here. I have got some photographs. Oops, it's upside down now. Hold on. <laughs> We're having technical issues this morning. I'm having technical issues this morning. It's uh, great to see. Great to see. Ah. ah, it's all upside down. Do we have a plan that shows the relationship of the addition to the existing house? Because I'm, I'm curious where these 45 degree angles intersect with the addition. That's exactly what I'm driving at. I'm not, I, you know what, actually, I don't know if we have that detail. Um, I think that have uh, to show you, oh, geez. The architectural drawings, those will show the, the 45 degree angle walls are on the, not next to the house or they're away from the house, kind of mirroring the 45 degree angle that's part of the house. I'm sorry, the plan that I have doesn't show the 45 degree angles on the house. Uh, yeah, the photographs toward the end. The photographs toward the end show where the addition is, uh, is to be. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, let me see if I can clean clear up the screen so that I can. Uh... All right, see what I'm doing here. All right. Okay, it might be helpful. I'm looking at the aerial view. And I see an X. Yeah, I did that. Is that where it's going? <laughs> yes, that is that is where um, I can get this round so you can see. So this property has an addition that connects the house and the garage and, and, an, and an additional room. And then this is going off of the back, almost parallel to the back line of the property. Uh, that keeps on turning around on me. I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I will go back up to what you're looking at, Don. Okay. Which is, uh, Is the um, rear wall of this addition approximately parallel to the rear property line? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what we're looking at. Okay. Okay. Jude, describe for us the um, material being used. Sure. So we use an extruded aluminum for the <clears throat> structure around the room, which is minimal. It's three and a quarter inches wide in the corners, and the rest of the room will be glass, all glass. Um, the pieces that join the glass in between the operating window units will be approximately one and one eighth of an inch thick. So it's not a massive structure looking. It's it's more of a glass of a three season room. So it appears to be like you're sitting outside. Okay. The and, is, and, and the and roof, the roof is a, or the ceiling is. It's a it's um, <clears throat> like a. Uh, a sit panel. It's a uh, insulated foam with an aluminum skin structural with structural I beams in between them. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> if I could make a comment here uh, regarding the plans that are on the screen right now. D these ones right here, or the one the the, the page before the previous one, and the foundation plan and the plan the submitted as the architectural drawings. Yes. You're the talking A one, Bob. Yeah, A1, yes, and the plan view in the upper left-hand corner. Mm -hmm. um, what we need to have is this tied dimensionally to the house existing house plan. So what I would recommend to you that is needed is the back wall of the existing building, which is the second addition to the first house, but the back wall of the existing garage and family room be plotted and, and uh, into this plan drawing so we can see the adjacency in particular of the left-hand wall 
um, and the angle, which is not 45, it's, not, it's a 30 degree angle coming into it because there's a dead corner potentially in there that we cannot judge as either working or for that matter, just plain working. So I would recommend that this plan of your floor plan of the addition and go out to the site and measure the back wall of the building and get the angles correct and show the exact location of this addition. May I also add something? Um, I really think that we need to see it in context. So I think of the elevation of the rear of this and how it it uh, is uh, how it looks in terms of being adjacent to the back of the rear of the house. Um, yeah, I, we're not I think just seeing it in context. Yeah, I think what we're hearing from the board members is we just need greater clarification of exactly where this attaches, what the angles are, especially the back wall of a garage. I also noticed that there's a gutter uh, to the, as you're looking at the back of the house to the right, what's going to happen with that? Is this inside the gutter? So I just think we need a little better um, description and possibly even a site visit. Would that be called for? Uh, I'd recommend a drawing first. I agree. And the other question is the uh, elevation shows a 24 inch um, wall under the grass. I'd like to know what the surface of that is and how it goes to the existing house. I'm sorry, Dan, could you say that again? I, I, it was a little garbled. Uh, the elevation drawing shows that there is a 24 inch foam knee wall below uh -huh. the glass. I'd like to know what the appearance of that is and how it relates to the house. Okay. Questioning whether or not that should be clabbered to match the house. Okay. So do we have what we need? So I guess where we're at at this is we're going to leave this application open and wait for a little bit more detail. And Kate, our next meeting is? Our next meeting is? The 20th. Yeah, um, uh, August the? 20, 20. Yes, August 20th, okay. yeah. So okay. hopefully we can get that information before then and um, get the plan. And if the plan comes in before then and we think it's necessary to get a site visit, Kate, you can arrange that. Yep. Okay. okay. Any so, questions from? Uh, nope, just to reiterate. So I'm gonna get proper elevation plans showing in relation to the um, sunroom to the back of the home, for the proper elevation. And uh, with the garage the also. Right, with exact measurements as to where it's located in the back of the house. Okay. And then also how the knee wall in, rela in relation, if we have to put clapboard on the on a solid foam knee wall, which is, it's we can do that, it's not a problem. Okay. That's good. The only other thing I would add is to verify if you could the existing roof height so that you know that your drawing of elevation, you know, tucks in underneath that as you show in your in construction drawing. Just to verify that as part of your dimensional accuracy for the submission got it thank you the, the existing house drawings uh the the relationship between the addition and the house should be shown in plan view as well as elevation mm -hmm. yeah okay all right anything thank else thank you okay thank you so we're leaving this open and waiting for more information very good thank you Thank, Thank you. you very much. Moving on to CA-20-15-201-19 C Street signage. Is that applicant here? Yes, I am here. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Okay, good. Uh, so can you just describe and go through what you're going to be doing here? Yes, so we have a set of channel letters that we're going to be mounting on a raceway. Um, so the letters are individual and we're mounting on the raceway, the aluminum raceway, so that way we have less holes into the building uh, since that um, is one of the requirements that Pioneer, um, the owner, gave us. Um, and then we're just going to have uh, another hole for electrical and uh, that's about it. 
Um, and just so everyone knows, this does actually meet the requirements of the sign ordinance, the size and location um, uh, and so forth, and number. Okay. So Any comments or questions from board members? If not, I'm looking for a motion. My only comment would be, and it's probably not appropriate, it's a pretty wild sign style if all the different storefronts did this, but that's what storefront signs are about. Um, it's it's an aggressive sign, needless to say. Yeah, I don't have an issue with that. I agree completely, and those are those are kind comments. I think <laughs> the building would. This is one of those cases, just for our own continuing education on signage, where buildings, especially those that have just been renovated, should recommend signage standards for the primary building the secondary tenant and storefronts. We've talked about this before. It's not that I'm against the independence of a signage. Well, that's not that we are against the independent character of signage, but it is recommended in historic context and design context for some reference and consistency to, to strengthen this building's recent renovation and origin. Thank you. As well as the space that it faces, which is significant. Yeah, it is. That said, uh, it does meet the requirements. I probably, I personally don't have a problem with it. But. That's okay. Does the applicant want to respond to that? To just to, I uh, ask a question yeah. first. Sure. sure. Um, it says that the letter face um, are all white. So the color that you're seeing is based on the LED light wheel. If it changes color. The LED is just white. Uh, the color of the faces are is as you see in the drawing. Okay. So okay. The, the plastic face that that will have vinyl on it that's printed to match the exact colors that they have in their logo. Oh, because I'm just is white letters. It is white letters. The those sides, which is the aluminum that you see from the side view. So if you're walking from Warren Street or from, um, uh, I can't remember the other end, and you're walking towards it, you're going to see all white. Then yeah. the color of the raceway is the same color as the building. So, if, so you're standing um, of... if you're standing in front of it, all you'll see is the actual colors. Yeah. And it is illuminated from internally, it's white. Okay. So it's nice and crisp. Um, it'll look clean. The film is um, also illuminated and at night, all you'll see is the word film. The background is not illuminated. That's aluminum. And that again is painted the same exact color as the fascia. That reddish color. So are these, are these block letters or is this a box sign? It is not a box sign. They're individual letters. Right. And they are acrylic faced, are they? Yes. Or not. Okay. And so the colors in the acrylic facing of each letter, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Thanks. Because the white was yep. listed. That's where the confusion was. Yep. Thank you. The white, the white is on the edges. So right. when you look at it from every any any side view, you'll see the white mainly. So it's basically to make it look three dimensional. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. I have no issue with it. Okay, I'd uh, entertain additional comment or a motion to approve. Kate, do you see anybody making a motion to approve? I, I don't see I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff. Okay, do we have a second? A I'll second. Thanks, Julia. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? I'm opposed. Opposed. One of one, one opposition. Anybody abstain? I abstain. Okay. Um, why? Why do you abstain? <laughs> uh, because I can't support it. Well, then you oppose. <laughs> yeah, I think then you oppose it. I oppose it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what's the count, Kate? Then we have. Uh, so there are. I believe that is four to. There's, sorry, I should count us all. One, two, we have um, seven. I see four to two without me. Four to two. Yeah, four to two without you. Okay, yep. Mo motion carries. Thank you. 
<clears throat> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, uh, attending our WebEx meeting. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good. Thanks, Kevin. Moving forward, uh, zoning referral, special permit SP-4-22 and 2, 309311 West Fayette Street. Is that applicant here? I think Jim is here. Uh, yeah, Jim Niddle here. Can you hear me? Yes, Jim. How are you? I'm well. Can you see me? I'm not sure if my camera is working. Yeah, yes. I can see you. Yep, we can see you. Excellent. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Okay, the floor is yours, Jim. Why don't you... Uh, this is a fairly simple one. This is uh, 309, 311 West Street. Uh, most of us know it as the Stoop building um, based on the last use. Um, this is a historic tax credit project. We uh, um, received uh, a couple minor comments back from SHPO, um, really regarding the storefront. Uh, uh, I, they just needed a little uh, historical reference to the center door, which obviously makes a lot of sense. Um, we're, modifying, we're modifying existing storefront. Somebody's got a mute. Uh, we're modifying the existing storefront to put a door back in the center as it used to. I can learn to understand you much better if I can get familiar with the way you talk. I need your. Okay, <laughs> something's got to be turned off. I think it's Dan. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, so we're modifying the existing storefront to add a, add a door back into the center as it used to be. Um, we're getting rid of that round uh, awning that's there, and we're going to put a smaller, uh, simple awning over the what will be the residential door. Uh, there, it will it will continue to be a restaurant. Uh, Bar on the ground floor. The owner is working with a couple people now, so I can't really uh, can't really tell you who that's going to be. Uh, and upstairs, we're uh, taking the upper two floors and creating two apartments, uh, each a two-level apartment. So one in the front, facing out; one in the back. Uh, the one in the back has access to a patio, uh, a walkout uh, terrace uh, on the second floor. And uh, right now we are looking at um, uh, creating a, a roof access for the front apartment. Uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the few things that came back from SHPO, obviously, because we went, we batted this upper uh, uh, deck and stair is we need to obviously do our mock-up now to prove that you can't see uh, that penthouse from the street. So uh, that should be happening sometime this week. And I can get my comments back to ship. Basically, from from Fayette, um, uh, cleaning a little bit of, little bit of pointing, uh, possibly some different paint colors because there's a lot of red and, and such on there now. Um, and there, uh, the upper floor, the third floor windows, um, they they were filled in with some wood shutters. Actually, one of them has a small little moment. Or not even, I think it's a vinyl window. Uh, those windows will be replaced uh, to match the, the, the ones that were replaced on the second floor, um, which uh, were quality wood double hung window. Um, I, I, I don't know if those were from 1917 or from the 1990s. They're probably from the 1990s. We haven't really been able to confirm that. But they're in good shape, and uh, they're insulated glass windows, and we're gonna we're gonna match those. The back of the building, same thing. Uh, the third floor windows have been boarded up for for who knows how long, many years. So we'll be replacing those as well. Um, and that's it. Um, any questions? Uh, well, just for the edification of the board, our jurisdiction here is the continent. And, correct and uh um there were a few things that you said that you still wait uh for um uh response back from shippo and yeah. there were a few other items that you said you're not quite sure of so um i'm just wondering if uh well, our comment yeah, should I, also include i should well let me restate that because really we there's nothing, nothing that came back from SHPO objecting to anything we're doing with it, with 
especially with the front of the building. Um, they they had wanted some uh, some proof that there was actually was a door in the middle. Of the room. I I, they, I I supplied them with some uh, historic photos uh, of that. Um, so the only real issue at the, the, that uh, that's pending is is regarding the rooftop penthouse and whether you can see it from the street or not. And obviously, um, I think you can't. You won't see it, but. You're right. right. You no, know, anyone, anyone who's done a, a tax credit project knows you have to basically build a uh, mock-up, uh, throw right. two by right. four frame, and then uh, wrap it with uh, orange right. fence, and then right. take right. some pictures to show the proven to them. So that, that's really the only that's the only outstanding issue, really. So, um, hey Jim, the yes. back stair from the second floor does that exist? That's existing, yes. Okay. Yeah, is that a, happening on the back except for cleanup and windows on the third floor? Okay. And, and just to remind everyone also with project site review, this this is coming from zoning uh, as a project site review, and uh, and the purview of project site review really is what is visible from the from the street. So oh, great, that's correct. why there aren't um, elevations of. The property any other comments from any other board members i have a question yes i do uh on the front elevation it shows uh, a vertical sign we call it the marquee sign what are the intentions uh with that marquee sign it's pretty um pretty obvious on the front of the building yeah the, the marquee sign is staying um, and uh shippo has, has no issue with that um, I was wondering myself, what are the, what are you going to do with it? it it's staying, obviously, if there's a, when there's a new restaurant that we will probably, uh, I, I don't think we'd want to keep it as the stoop, but, uh, we will have to, uh, uh, change out the signage that's on there to, uh, something appropriate. Uh, the owner doesn't want to name the building, you know, doesn't, doesn't want it to be building signage, but the restaurant. Uh, we'll take advantage of that existing marquee. Okay. Bob, you had a question? If we had a, if we yeah. had a name for, if we had a restaurant tenant at this point, I could tell you more. Okay. Bob, you had a question? No, no, I had just three comments. I think, Jim, thank you. Um, I think that the issue that we're most concerned about here is that the new third floor windows are very carefully selected to match the second floor windows. I think yeah. that's an area that scrutiny for the grant and, and for the success of your facade is really required. So I would mm -hmm. hope that we would have a very accurate match to the second floor windows for the new windows. Yeah. Second, yeah. this, is, this is just uh, comments that uh, I, I was thinking um, that it's great to take away the curved awning. I think that's a good idea to have a conventional. Is it a sloped awning or is it a box? Is it a over the, well, okay, that's fine. My point here was that you have one over the entrance to the to the residence above, but not over to the door of the restaurant. And I'm not. I'm just asking, uh, will that confuse the building's entry to visitors to the restaurant? We can the numbers. I think on is appropriate. I, I think that's up to you. I'm not trying to make any statement here at all, except to ask that question. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting comment, Bob. The, the, you can't see, see it in the elevation so much, but the, that uh, restaurant door will be recessed because uh, the city doesn't uh, allow us to encroach on the sidewalk anymore. So, That's uh, fine. That's, that was simply what I was concerned about. And I think, um, lastly, I was hoping that the conduit of lights that were placed above the cornice on the first floor there might be better integrated into and brought down off of the brick facade into your existing um, mm -hmm. panel. Again, I understand that you've got a project and that's not with its existing, so you want to use it, but it was put on and didn't help the building's um, brick facade if it could have been incorporated below in, this, in, the, uh, in the storefront uh, section. Those are my yeah. comments. Yep. Yeah, no, understood. And it's something I can take up with the owner. Okay, okay. that'd be good. 
Okay, Kate, do you have our comments? I, I believe I'm hearing that they're in the positive. Um, yes. uh, everyone, yeah, um, with um, uh, the note that that the windows need to mat the second the new windows should match very carefully the the second floor windows um i think that's the main the main one to come back yeah okay all right Good. yep all right and that's certainly certainly a concern of ours and ship of national parks as well so. okay great all right i think we're all set then thank you very much Jeff. all right thanks everyone okay thank have you. a good one you too thank you Okay, moving on to a project site review, PR-20-9F1, 437 North Salina Street. Dan, are you still there? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. Okay, the floor is yours, Dan. Okay, thank you. Um, so when we last met, we had proposed in our drawings and, and had approved uh, um, a masonry infill on the first floor and now that we removed the that blonde block i call it the blonde brick that you can see and really exposed up to the beam um there are only two there are two piers on each side of the building they're about 16 inches each they're in really bad condition um they they don't abut to the building the gap on each side is a different size um they're not straight um and the idea of trying to figure out how to tooth brick in there it's soft it, it, it's just not it's just not going to work so what we're proposing to do is to a more traditional wood storefront similar like what uh, they just built down in the 700 block of uh, north salina street and to um you know to build a more traditional wood storefront with you know the decorative um boxes that would be raised um similar to what you see um in character along the rest of north salina street as well and uh you know we are we, we've ordered all of our windows and storefront so we're committed to the symmetry that um and we like the symmetry that uh, Bob and Don and the team um, asked us to carry last time through, and we are doing that, but we're, we, we're proposing to replace, uh, we, we need to replace that brick with, with a, you know, with a wood storefront. And you can see, you know, to the left there where they did it um, with love, you know, they were fortunate enough to have those two piers that were still in good shape um but um it's really going to be the best thing for the project and to have what we think will be the best look for the story have you done project a drawing project. of what you want to do yet Dan? yeah um, it's somewhere in what we sent over Let's i believe see. eve kate right yeah hold on it should yeah. be Project's coming along great. I, I, I was the one who forgot to mute, and that was my framing inspector. So the framing inspector and the uh, plumbing inspector and electrical inspections all happening today and tomorrow. We'll start insulating and rocking uh, next week. And uh, you know, I don't think the project's going to, I think we're going to be done somewhere around uh, uh, August 15 or so. So it's really come along well. Great. Um, Great. No surprises. Thank God, you know, the, um, the interiors, um, structurally with everything that we anticipated. So it's, it's, it's really come along, really come along well. Good. Any comments from any board members? Uh, Dan, this is Bob Haley. Uh, good morning. Um, good morning. in the previous, uh, discussion, we were encouraging you to try and narrow the uh, first floor openings to align with the two primary new windows on the second floor. Um, you sent you the wrong drawing. I'm looking at what you're looking at. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. But everything is everything is eight six by eight six. It, it, it's all in perfect symmetry. Okay, so we, we did what you asked, Bob, and, and, and it's going to look great. It's all framed out. It's going to look great. Oh, and, well, hang on. Let me catch up with you then. That sounds very, very encouraging. So you're saying the front elevation that we're looking at in our on screen is incorrect. 
it was incorrect. Right. I, I I apologize for that. I didn't. Wayne sent it over. I thought that. Um, well, let 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 me stop you right there and say you don't have to apologize if you have uh, advanced the design as we were suggesting. We'd love to send it over to Kate. Um, maybe you can hold that. The, the plan has worked out. Um, that's pretty good. <laughs> How's that? So, so if I'm understanding, because it was a suggestion um, earlier that you align the windows, and if I'm looking at it correctly, they are aligned top and bottom. Yeah, absolutely. The, okay. uh, they're, yeah. They're, frankly, they're all eight six by eight six. Other than obviously the storefronts eight six by ten, because it obviously has to get down to the ground, and I don't want that other window at the ground. I don't think everybody wants that other fixed window at the ground. So, um, but they are all perfectly in line and both horizontally and vertically with uh, with the second floor. Perfect. Perfect. So it means that um, the size of the pilasters, the wood pilasters that you're proposing are actually larger than what we're seeing in the drawing that was submitted. Yeah, and I'll get that right over to you, Kate. I don't know why Wayne did that. I it might fault for, I guess, not looking at his work, but... Uh, because that, make, that makes a difference in terms of... You guys know how those architects are. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> but no, Bob, uh, we, we, we're doing... I'll get that right over to her, and we're doing exactly what she asked for. It's going to look great. Well, that, I think that's... Thank you very much for doing that. I very much uh, appreciate that accommodation, because it was no small effort on your part. Secondly, yeah. uh, I would simply send that over with the plan and yep. Uh, yep. with that i would recommend that we approve the plan only subject to kate's review of what you're going to send to her yeah our, our let jurisdiction me, let me is not to approve our jurisdiction okay. is to comment okay let me bounce one more thing off you um because obviously if you remember the where that i-beam is we we originally had an ethos band there in the masonry below and now that whole ethos band goes away and it's going to be wood storefront you know right up to the underside of the of the window as it's supposed to be it's going to look great but if you go to the top um you know we still have an ethos band up there uh -huh. and two comments on my in my thought one I don't know if we want to introduce three materials on the facade or not up to you but you know now when we're now that we're really into it and we got everything on so we're looking at it the foam is going to follow the contour of the masonry and the contour of the masonry is not great because if you look at the original picture they busted off all that old you know cornice work so what I think makes sense is for, and I can draw this up, is to essentially do something similar to what we're doing on the first floor, up on the third floor with a plywood, and you know, and then the, and then the, you know, the raised box outs like we're doing above on the storefronts, and keep, you know, so we just keep it to two materials. We have that up top, we have that yeah. at the bottom. It's all a consistent look. Um, it's going to now look be now we're, I can put hat channel on there and I can manipulate it to make sure that you know it's all smooth and the e fish yeah. now that we've really looked at the masonry and, and unfortunately you know they knocked off all the cornice so it's it's just wompy up there so I'd rather put a hat channel and do it with wood as opposed to the e fish and keep it to just two materials. I think that's appropriate. I think that's very appropriate. I would yeah. encourage that. Great. I'll, 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 then I would all make sure, Kate, is one, that um, Wayne sends you the right drawing, and two, that uh, it now includes the, you know, the wood band up top and we will replace that, replace the ethos with the wood band. Great. That's great, Dan. Okay. Good. So I'm hearing that uh, with that, uh, Kate, if you've got comments, we're in the, the uh, positive. And, uh, oh, one, one question. So if it's all wood, is it painted? Yeah, and it'll be, and we'll call it out. You know, we've we've got the peppercorn as the base, and then the the inlay is going to be the is going to be the champagne that was the inlay color that was the color of the ethos. Okay. So it'll be that it'll still be that same. The storefront materials haven't changed. Um, it'll still be the peppercorn uh, as as the base color, and then the inlays will be the champagne. It's gonna look sharp. Okay. okay great. 
All I'll right. Show you guys one bone. I'm close to buy in 678 West Onondaga Street, uh, one of the old mansions down there, which nice. you know, I'll be back in front of you guys here shortly. Good. Right. Good, good, good luck good. with that. That's great. Yeah, yes. I like this. I really like this um, land. I, I really like the land bank um, process. And, yeah. You know, oh, it's, it's a good it, one. It's, it, it's worked well for it's it's worked well for me a couple of times and uh you know I, I I've got a tenant I think lined up in town for West Onondaga, so I should be back in front of you guys here in the next couple of months. That's good news. Thank you, Dan. Okay, Kate, I'll get this over to you. Okay, hey, great. Thank you. All right, you guys have a great day. Thank you for your time. You yeah, bet. thank you. Good luck. Yep, bye-bye. Okay. Okay. Uh Kate, you got all that? Yes. Okay. Okay, the last item is discussion on 910 Madison Street. Clarification of the boundaries of sanctuary building. Um, Kate, you sent us the material a question that I have for you before we get started. Have you yes. had any conversation with the owner or developer about these boundaries? No, I've not. Okay. I've not. Um and um so the point of this actually this even should have perhaps been under our old business because we started talk, uh, the board started talking about it. Uh, That's OK. Meeting. That's OK. Um, but, but the idea is to. Um, to be able to communicate to the, the developer um, uh, what the board feels is the envelope of the sanctuary um, okay. and so. And the, the common council was not that just said sanctuary building uh, or sanctuary portion when they were talking about what was contributing and what was not. Um, so uh, this this is what um, Don and Bob uh, and I have been discussing and and I we'd like to get some confirmation from the rest of the board. Um, and I don't uh, uh, Bob or Don, if you want to explain your thinking. Um, well, I, I think that both Don and I and Kate, we all reviewed it, of course, and we looked caref carefully at the original plans and tried to sort out exactly what happened. These right. in the yellow in the plan appear to be the defining characteristics of the primary temple quality. And that uh, is the yellow area. Um, the diagonal line in red on the plan below, Kate, um, yeah. I'm confused a little bit about that, although that may be just a roof line structure. I'm not sure what that it's, is. It's the roof, yeah. Uh, basically, it's, 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 it's the engagement um, of the roof. Yeah, it's the engagement yeah, yeah. of the sloped roof. Yep. It might might be that that red line wants to change to align with the uh, uh, yellow line on the drawing above. Right. Yeah, I mean, it may be something more like this. It's it's how. Yeah, even I'm though the roof sure how it's put together in the back there. Yeah, I guess my point is even though the roof line is is accurately done as you did it, um, I think we should align it with the plan uh, as a rectangular edge showing the print, okay. so we don't confuse uh, anyone any further on that. Secondly, uh, uh, both both Don and I, and I think we never discussed this, Don, but um, the importance of the front stairway and now this north stairway and absolutely. The and the slope of the corner. In other words, I think right. we should also list the two stairways, the two primary stairways that were for the front door and for the assembly in the back, and the landscape between the two as the hill, as the prominent site feature. We didn't list that here, but I think we should. But those are my comments. Yeah, no, we had talked about that specific point. And if you're looking at the significance of the sanctuary building, uh, and you go, as it were, stairway to stairway and everything in between. Uh, that's significant and it's primary and uh, it should be maintained. And listed and listed. Yeah. That's right. So what I'm looking for is, uh, is that agreement by the board members? I agree with Bob's comments. I would, I would agree as well. I think absolutely you need to show um, on the roof plan, not the diagonal line, because I, I know that it's a plane of the overbuild, but we need to show it um, because it's so symmetrical right. and it was designed that way. That should then be drawn to mimic exactly what the footprint shows. Correct. Correct. Yeah, no, that's that's easy enough. I think that um, 
all I need to do, this is my red line. So all I need to do is just move this down here yeah, look to the right. So, yeah. Yep. Okay. Basically. So like we're so. all in agreement. So okay. what, um, and, and just to let you know that the, my understanding is that, um, uh, the BZA continue is, is, uh, I don't actually I don't know if the BZA has a complete application yet from the developer, but as we discussed at the last meeting, the BZA will be the board of jurisdiction for this and um, potentially the lead uh, lead agency for seeker. Um, so, in effect, the BZA will get the first bite out of the apple and uh and then we'll be looking for more comments on um a c of a we're also still waiting for um the complete um the the full uh seeker f uh to complete the the c of a ourselves so um at the moment we're at the ball i believe is in the developers court um and uh but i will communicate this to uh, the developer to the uh, to zoning to corporation council and so forth that this is this is the envelope that we're looking at um, in basically for, and basically what you were just saying Don stairway to stairway that whole problem yeah. um, and the hill and the landscaping okay that's so what, that's what I meant yep yep mm -hmm. one okay other, great one other question anything else other than that I'd look for a motion to adjourn well, just one minute just one minute All right. I, Kate, there was some terminology in the discussion portion of our minutes that concerned me. And I think it's uh, regarding the Z BZA. Mm -hmm. It's as if so, the, the building zoning uh, uh, will conduct the initial review of the project and may refer the project and certificate of appropriateness to the Landmark Preservation Board for review. Basic, basically, if the ZBA is the lead on this, they would send the developer, I think, to the landmark for a certificate of appropriateness. I don't think they would do that themselves. I think that's simply, um, isn't that correct that the, the LPB decision on the certificate of appropriateness will help inform the BZA's appropriate uh, action? So essentially, they won't be doing the certificate of appropriateness. If oh, no, 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 right. no, 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 basically, no. The, the, what I wanted to clarify was that the the B, if the bees just for example if the BZA looked at the proposal and said uh, for the variances that they're looking for and said absolutely not then then basically the project would stop there. Okay. If the um, and they're uh, because of the the you know because those variances are needed to to make the project work so. Um, as I said, the BZA will have their first review, and if they feel that there is enough to, you know, that that, that they they may be inclined to approve or they need more information, at that point they'll say, please, Landmark Preservation Board, review the the C of A or get the C of A. again. I think it would be appropriate in the process to as it's required, review for the whatever the applicant's applying for, for a certificate of appropriateness, and then it goes back to ZBA for continuance. Yeah. Uh, we'll check with Corporation yeah. Council to see what the best yeah, flow, exactly. or what the le legal flow is. Yeah. And yeah. we'll be advised as to when the ZBA meets. So I think everything yeah. else will be. Thank you. Done. Okay. Anything else? If not, I'll make a motion to adjourn or somebody make a motion to adjourn. Uh, I move to adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Adjourn. Okay. Everybody stay safe and thank right. you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Okay.